So you would have seen in one of my previous videos, we've created this beautiful looking kind of brochureware website, which is fantastic. It's the equivalent to kind of like a static, almost like HTML website. It doesn't have any dynamic capabilities at all. Of course, I could lift and shift this. I could then deploy it and host it. And away I would go um, for my users to then start using the application. But unfortunately, it would fall short somewhat because there is some areas of this particular website where I'm going to want to introduce some kind of back end behavior. So for example, we're going to want our users users to kind of send us a message we're going to want them to complete this particular form so then we can receive the the contact form response into our inbox now how would we do that well we could typically call out to a third party api um, or another back-end service that we've created but we don't really want to cut any code we live in the 21st century now where everything is kind of almost feels like it's being uh, kind of vibe coded so how can we do that? Well, the folk at BuildShip have introduced new features into their platform, which is going to allow us to vibe code up a backend service that's going to allow us to take receipt of the information that gets completed here to through to a build chip service which then can deliver that into our inbox and i'm going to walk you through that process now just to show you how easy it is for us to be able to get up and running with that type of enhancement so without further ado let's get into the video let's get into build chip and i'll show you how it works So I've headed over to build chip tools here and what I've done is I've just keyed in a very, very simple prompt here, which pretty well much describes exactly what I would like. So I've got, I have a contact form on my website, which has the following field names, name, email, subject, and message. And I would like an API, which will send me an email of my contact form responses. It can't get any more as simple as that. So I can just hit this little button here and away it will go. This is now gonna ask me now kind of which build chip project. You need to make sure that you've got a build chip project ready to take receipt of this particular kind of uh, sort of backend service. So I'm just gonna choose one of the ones I've got here. I'm just gonna choose build chip V2, hit continue. Okay, so here on the left hand side, you can see now we're kind of into this kind of almost like typical kind of uh, sort of uh, sort of feature set that you would see in other tools now where on the left hand side, we can kind of prompt up enhancements to what looks like on the right hand side here is an actual plan. So this is not kind of like the uh, the back end service that's actually been built at this particular time, but it's kind of working out a plan It's giving you this ability to be able to sort of cross check everything you've asked with kind of like almost like a pseudo kind of plan on the right hand side, which you can kind of look just kind of get a filters think actually there that's pretty well much the flow from kind of start to finish and of course if you wanted to make any changes to that down in this left hand side here you can continue to make it sort of prompt changes so let's have a look and see kind of what it's produced here so on the left hand side here has been quite descriptive here I've just kind of just had a little sort of read through this and this all looks exactly what I'm asking for now this is a very very simple kind of back-end service and um, it looks like it's pretty well much covered everything that I want it to do here I don't need to make any changes at this particular stage and just kind of looking through here you can see here that we've got our kind of our input fields which have come from our form kind of text fields here it's going to compose up this particular email it's going to kind of just sort of shape it up for us and then it's going to send the email now um, there is limited capabilities within build chip in terms of sending emails without using third-party services so it's likely going to use something like gmail here um, to, to kind of send the emails which is absolutely fine i've got a gmail account and we can test that and then of course it's just got then the outputs here just a status message so to me everything is looking pretty pretty good now all i would need to do here is um i would now hit the little start building option here now that's now going to go away now and it's now going to turn our plan into you know proper back end kind of notes here this is the kind of thing that you would um would have done previously where you would have gone into build chip you created a workflow and then you would then start creating these nodes independently but of course with the power of ai now we can kind of build out these nodes in a really really convenient way we don't really need to, to kind of know uh, too much about kind of the the lower level detail so I'm just going to leave this to play out and then we'll come back and review what it's done. Okay, so all my nodes have been built. Um, this looks pretty good. The only thing I would say is what it's done is it's actually selected resend here to actually send the emails, but I don't actually want to use resend. So this is actually quite a good uh, opportunity for us now to make a change. So I'm just going to go down here to the bottom left hand side here and I'm just going to say, so switch out resend with Gmail, just hit enter there. And hopefully um, I have got that node selected. So as you can see here, it's kind of got the, the node kind of just at the top here. So it knows I've kind of had that one selected. So let's just see if that um, switches out um, comfortably with the Gmail equivalent. 
Okay, then really good. This seems to have done its job perfectly. It switched out this now to Gmail, which is great. So it looks like I'm pretty well much in a good position now where I can kind of start just kind of configuring the nodes up a little bit more just to make sure that I kind of got everything kind of set up here for my inputs here. So I'm just going to walk through and do that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of get this kind of hooked up here. So we've got a little fingerprint here. So we need to get this kind of connected to our, our Google account. So I'm just going to choose a digital pro now of course if you haven't got this set up yourself with inside build chip you'll just go for a little wizard there to kind of set that up so i'm just going to select that here like that and that's now all set up for us so now what i can do is i now um if i wanted to i can kind of test this particular node out but i think what i'll do is i think i'll just go through and carry on kind of setting this up here so let's just see how all of this is hooking up here so we've got html content here um, it looks like we need to kind of set that up with inside our email body so it's going to compose up our email here and so i'm going to want to kind of just click on the little pen here go to variables here and then let's have a look here we've got the compose email content so we just select that which we know that that's now going to get populated within that particular no, we're not doing any attachments or anything like that. Let's have a look at about the email subject head on that. So this is just going to give us a subject. It's going to say contact form is then the actual subject itself. So it's going to pull the subject from up here and kind of populate it in there. So that's looking good. Recipient email here. It's just got email. I'm not quite sure that is uh, particularly correct because I think actually the sender email is the person who would uh, fill in that particular form. So recipient, I think, would be who it's going to deliver it to. So this would need to be uh, an email address um, uh, of myself. This is going to be my Gmail email email address, which I'll, I'll pop in there in just a moment. And then the sender email, I believe, actually should be the uh, the email here of the recipient who's actually completed the form. So I'm just going to try setting that here. So I'm just going to go then to your inputs, and I'm just going to select the email just there like that. So that is all populated so the uh so what else have we got up here so this is generating our html content which looks absolutely fine we've got an input we're gonna have to do our trigger in just a moment let's just have a look down here um this is got a little error what's this talking about here uh, i don't know really know why we need to even include that so we don't really need we can just delete that we don't need anything there so uh, we could put like a little output here just to say the message has been sent successfully or something like that. Um, but we'll, we won't bother with that for this particular example. We'll just keep it very, very clean and tidy. So what else? Uh, let's just go. Let's go down here to the recipient email. Let me just grab that. So just go in here. Let's just delete that out here like that. Let's put my email address in here. Just need to say text like that. That is all set up. So let's just move up here then to the test option. Just hit test. So that looks like it's composed all of the HTML, which looks pretty good. It's kind of populated some details in this. So that's all looking good. So that node's all working nicely. Let's move down here. Let's see if we can test this out a little bit. So let's go to the sender email then. I'm just going to put in perhaps my same email address here like that. And I'm just going to put test subject. And I'm just gonna say test, test body like that. And just hit test send email let's see if this works for us there we go looks like we've got a good response back here which um, would indicate to me that that has been sent correctly let me just check my inbox to see if that's appeared okay here we go this is in my gmail account you can see i've had that delivered so let's have a look here uh, i've just got test body so it looks like i've got everything i need in there um, i've got my my test subject so that's looking pretty good so obviously we'll run this out in a minute um, from the actual website just to make sure we kind of get the full kind of uh, the, the content that we're uh, expecting to see but um, that's looking good let's move back okay so here we are back in bolt then i've created a prompt here very very simple prompt it says enhance the contact form to call out to the following api as a post request and pass it in the contact form fields these would be name email subject and message i think it's quite important that we make sure that we you know kind of explicitly say that it's name email subject and message because it will then know bolt will know kind of how to shape up that post request to, to conform to our build chip workflow so just hit the send option here Let's just let Bolt do its thing, make those changes, and I'm pretty confident that we'll do everything that we need it to do. Okay, so Bolt's come back. It's um, it's uh, hopefully pretty confident that it's done everything that it needs it to do. So what we can now do is we can now go to that contact form. Okay, so I just filled in all of these details here. I've just put some basic details in. I've, I've kind of made the email different because I don't want it to kind of look like it's then clashing with the one that we've kind of got almost like hard coded into our build chip workflow, but that's um, pretty good. I'm just gonna hit send message. So don't worry about this particular error that's come up here. Let's 
move back over to build chip here and say get data and then what you will see here is you'll see the data that we have actually passed in here if you look at the body here I've passed in all of these details here and the reason why we just got errors because we haven't kind of got this full workflow working at this moment of time this is purely just taking receipt of the data so that's um, all pretty good so it looks like we're getting data coming in so we, there's no reason at all while uh, our actual build chip workflow won't actually work when we actually deploy it so that's good we've got our rest API call up here I think we can quite simply say ship now there we go so that's looking like it's ready to go here now this should be the same kind of API endpoint here that we had previously let's just uh, copy that let's just make sure that that is the same so I'm just going to paste that in here like that and you can see here it's the same endpoint that's in our bolt this is the one we originally set up so we know that's all ha hasn't changed for us or anything like that so there's absolutely no reason at all why this kind of contact form won't work now so now we shipped it let's do that contact form again so there we go all completed let's hit the send message option here it says your message has been sent it's not the most graceful kind of response back what we want to do is we're probably going to want to enhance bolt to say look once you've actually sent the message please go to like a you know so like a thank you page or something like that but of course that's a, an easy thing to do in bolt so let's go into the inbox let's see if we've actually received that email okay here we are into our gmail account and you can see here now i've received this lovely html looking contact form response so it's that easy to set everything up for us now of course in build chip if we just move back over to build chip here so you can see here, obviously, as we are using this now, this is now a live kind of workflow. This is now obviously going to use the credits that you've currently got. Now, I'm just in the free plan here. You can see I've got quite a, uh, a limited number of credits, but of course, that's what you do get with the free plan. But of course, for um, users who are using this as just a like a, um, a sort of more, a sort of a slow paced back end service, the free plan should be quite adequate for you to receive contact form responses uh, from your website. But of course, BuildShip is a very powerful platform. It's got lots of features that you're going to want to tap into to really sort of build out um, more intelligent applications but this is really just a very very simple walkthrough on how easy it is to vibe code up a back-end service that works with your front end web application hopefully you found that really really useful uh, compass is the product named from build chip please do go and check it out it's a it's a fantastic addition to building out uh, build chip workflows so of course if you like the video thank you very much and of course if you are watching this on youtube please do subscribe to the youtube channel and if, uh, if you're not a member of the digital pros no code academy then please do check that link in the description so until the next video thank you for watching and i'll see you soon